it took a giant robot to Comic-Con. The ultimate walk-around cosplay robot. And he became one of the big hits of Comic-Con. <laughs> The idea, obviously, is to be bigger and better and more innovative and kick last year's butt. So let's jump into creative build discussions now. Following on the heels of last year's, we want to be bigger in presentation. You know, the expectation is going to be high. It's got to be mobile, portability, mobility. You've got to be able to get it in around um, easily throughout the event. And lots of fun tech wow. We always have to remember this is wired. What we love are love tech, so. And another key member of the team this year is Stratasys, uh, a world leader in 3D printing. Same with some school character arts and us. Well, that's what we do is create characters, so that's got to be kind of paramount. Now comes the fun part. All the legacy effects artists are going to pitch their creature concepts. And so it would be this like really ferocious, imposing thing, but then his chest would open up and it would reveal cat chick pilot. How are you seeing it moving around? I was just imagining it built on a frame with bicycle wheels so they could have a couple guys pushing around inside. In between bionic and mechanic. Sure. Style. So Chrome Insectobot. My original profile was sort of monkeyish, and then it sort of went beakish as I was sketching it. If it was more monkeyish, then you could actually include lip yeah. articulation. And if you wanted to stay away from someone, like Jim said, some of the problems you get with lip articulation. Exterior, deep space. <laughs> we fly through a vast star field. Support vehicle could be dressed up to part of the performance so that you could get the performer around the con easily enough. You can see from the side here, we got two puppeteers. The guy on top does the arm. The guy in the bottom can either drive a cart or he can manipulate the head. All the portholes and windows in there, we could have as a double pane glass or, or plexi and have little bubbles coming up through it. Trying to make tech and organic work at once. This feels more of a mechanical bunny. It has lots of lights and worry things and spinning things because he's a big hopper. So I was thinking this thing here could open up, cannon. Bunny pellets. We have a maquette. Our first so, I actually have oh. What? He's clad in some sort of armor. He's not all fur. He's hidden inside of a dome. So it reveals him. So he's the barker. He's the guy at King Kong's like, come see the monster, come yes. see the show. Sorry. These legs are articulated that could potentially be three to four feet tall. Retro Victorian steampunk robot that's like a war machine. The thing he's pushing right there would be a vortex cannon. Dave had done uh, some concepts for dragon, armored or fully metallic. Each one innovative, different, uh, uh, some had wheels, some could fly, some had stories and scripts. There was one design that sort of stood above the rest. The bigger, badder, better. Let's Alan hear for Scott, Alan. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. So we won. They love our stuff. They like it. <laughs> That's what really kind of blew everyone away, was just getting the scale and, and having that, like, how the hell is that working? You're never going to imagine there are three people in there. Like, how is this happening? We have yeah. to make sure that this will actually work or we're back to the drawing board. Want to see more? Go to Wired.com for the entire Giant Creature series.